Hello everyone, so considerable talk of course about what's happening on the border and the kind of control with China but also a lot of discussion around what exactly is the requirement for hospital beds likely to be and are these reports that are coming out of Delhi of needing 150,000 beds within a month and a half really correct and there are people who are getting somewhat concerned about that I can't tell you how many calls I've got so let's just try and disaggregate this a little bit before we go to the other big stories of the day let's see why is it that the Delhi government for example is saying you could need 150,000 beds the Delhi government is saying that Delhi itself may have about 500,000 cases by the end of July now all of them obviously are not going to be active cases the Delhi government's projection is something like 319,000 active cases if you have 319,000 active cases let's say 25% of them actually need hospitalization that's where the figure of 80,000 hospital beds in a city like Delhi come up and you can repeat that exercise for virtually any other city you care to think about whether it's Mumbai or Chennai or Ahmedabad or Gurugram, or Gurugram or wherever you want to talk about but what the Delhi government's also saying is how do you get from 80,000 to 150,000 they're saying that a large number of people are going to come from outside now that's where the numbers may not entirely be correct because let's face it if you are having a situation of complete medical emergency in Delhi and a complete healthcare breakdown there and no beds available anywhere and people having to be crammed into uh, you know, stadiums and places like that or banquet halls perhaps people from other states will not come they probably will just stay in their own states yeah Delhi is normally got a good reputation for good healthcare but they will not come in so that I think is one of the things that has to be kept in mind I just wanted to clarify this today before we look at other things may not be 150,000 and even that 80,000 bed figure for a city like Delhi within a month and a half is only assuming the present growth rate continues for another 50 days which means three doublings or, or so and so forth but I think it's important for every city to do this Mumbai did do this sort of an exercise and they got a lot of additional beds Delhi hopefully is planning this right now Chennai should be doing exactly the same thing as should other cities whether it's Kolkata or Ahmedabad or others forecast out see what the worst case situation could be a month and a half or two months from now and start preparing for it all right let's now bring you up to date with all the other big news stories of the day Prime Minister Narendra Modi delivered the inaugural address on the occasion of the 95th annual plenary session of Indian Chamber of Commerce on Thursday via video conferencing. Outlining his vision for Atmanirbhar Bharat, Prime Minister said India is facing many challenges but we will emerge victorious. He said the turning point in the war against COVID-19 will be a self-reliant India. The Prime Minister said he has immense confidence in India's crisis management capability and in the talent of the country's farmers, entrepreneurs and the many MSMEs. The Prime Minister pointed at the need to manufacture products which are made in India but are made for the world. Rejecting claims of under-reporting of fatalities, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister K. Palani Swami said on Thursday that his government has been transparent in reporting COVID-19 deaths and no one can hide information. He also asserted that there was no community transmission of coronavirus in the state which has reported over 1,500 fresh cases for four consecutive days till Wednesday, with the tally crossing the 36,000 mark. Shabrimala Temple will not open for public for monthly prayers, a Kerala Devaswam minister said on Thursday. He said the decision was taken after meeting the temple chief priest. The BJP had earlier criticised the CPIM-led Kerala government for allowing temples under the state-funded Devaswam board to open for devotees. There are around 3,000 temples in Kerala under five Devaswams that are temple affairs body controlled by the government. The union government had allowed reopening of places of worship, malls and restaurants from June 8 onwards across the country. While the Guru Vayur Lord Krishna Temple in Kerala opened its doors to devotees, the Padmanabha Swami Temple in the state capital remained shut. 
The death toll due to COVID-19 rose to 8,102 on Thursday and the number of cases climbed to 2,86,579 in the country after it registered the highest single-day spike of 357 fatalities and 9,996 cases. The number of recoveries remained more than the active novel coronavirus cases for the second consecutive day. The number of active cases stand at 1,37,448, while 1,41,028 people have recovered. The recovery rate in India stands at 49.21% and more than 70% of deaths are due to comorbidities. The number of COVID-19 cases in India has crossed the 2.86 lakh mark and a third of them have been reported in the first 10 days this month. The country has been recording close to 10,000 cases every day since June 1st. This means that nearly 90,000 cases have been added in the nationwide tally from June 1st to 10. India's first COVID-19 case was detected more than four months ago on January 30th, but it took more than 100 days after that to reach the 1 lakh mark on May 18th. However, the next 1 lakh cases were added in just about a fortnight. India is the fifth worst hit nation by the COVID-19 pandemic, surpassing Spain's tally five days ago. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre has said that if people fail to honour the current level of restrictions imposed to curb COVID-19 spread, he would be forced to reimpose lockdown in the state. During a press conference, Uddhav said lockdown will have to be lifted in a phased manner, but the danger is yet to pass. If relaxations to the lockdown start turning out to be risky, his government will be compelled to reimpose the lockdown. He urged Mumbaikers to avoid crowding. A major economic crisis induced by the COVID-19 outbreak is knocking on India's doors as the country reels under the pressure of mounting virus tally. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari on Wednesday said that India is expected to lose revenue of 10 lakh crore rupees, which is about 5% of India's GDP due to the coronavirus crisis. He said that the situation was so grim that some states do not have money to pay salaries next month. Gadkari said India has a GDP of 200 lakh crore rupees and about 10% of it, the government's 20 lakh crore rupees stimulus package, has gone to industries, farmers. In an effort to create an interface that helps users cope with the new restrictions imposed due to COVID-19, Google has announced new features for its Maps app. The tech giant is adding relevant alerts that include warnings if a certain mode of public transport is shut or precautionary reminders to wear a face mask as well as options to check out how crowded a transit is. In a blog post, MAPS product director Ramesh Nagarajan shared the additions which will be rolled out to several countries including India, UK, US, France, Thailand, Spain and more. The availability of features will depend on coordination with local authorities and government mandates. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the U.S. is now over 2 million, according to a tally from Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. has the most recorded cases in the world, followed by Brazil and Russia. Infections are still rising in 21 of the U.S. states, even as restrictions continue to be relaxed. The country's death toll also has continued to climb steadily, surpassing 1,12,900 people. The pandemic appears to be shifting from large urban centers like New York City and Chicago towards smaller rural areas. Say experts. China is allowing employees of large state run firms to take shots of two experimental coronavirus vaccines, says a Bloomberg report. Workers intending to travel overseas are being offered to try vaccinations developed by China National Biotech Group, a subsidiary of Beijing based Sinopharm Group. There are currently five COVID-19 vaccines in trial stage in China and this move shows how far ahead the nation is in terms of developing a viable vaccine. The workers who volunteer to trial the vaccine will not just protect themselves but also help in testing the medicine's efficacy in beating pathogens as coronavirus cases in China have dwindled significantly.